This presentation will talk about acarology. So when we say acarology, that is a branch of science that is concerned with the study of mites and ticks. The ticks and mites are composed of a group of organisms that are part of a larger group of arthropods known as the arachnida. Most of these are considered to be free living. When we say free living, these are organisms that are not dependent directly on another organism for survival. Included also in this group are the scorpions and the arachnids, or the spiders rather. In this presentation, we are only going to focus on ticks and mites that are parasitic. So when we say parasitic, these are organisms that are directly dependent on another organisms for their survival. For their taxonomy, arachnids are members of the same phylum of the animal kingdom as insects, and that is the phylum arthropoda. They belong to the subphylum chelicerata, and the subphylum chelicerata includes the class arachnida, which again contains several subclasses. The subclass Akari, synonym Akaria, Akarina, Akarida, includes the ticks and mites. The ticks and mites also belong to the order Parasitiformes and the Acariformes. Ticks specifically belong to the suborder Exodida or Metastigmata. They have two families, the hard ticks under the family Exodidae and the soft ticks under the family Argacidae. The arachnids, specifically the ticks and mites, belong to the subphylum Chelicerata. The word uh, Chelicerata comes from Kele, meaning claw, and again, this subphylum consists of the ticks and mites, the spiders, the crabs, and others. This subphylum is characterized by two tagmata or body regions. The first region of its body is known as the prosoma, which represents the cephalothorax. It is also known as the head, and it functions for sensory, feeding, and locomotion. It often contains the eyes, but never antennae. The second tagmata, or portion of this uh, of the body of this um, subphylum is the opistosoma or the abdomen and it functions for digestion, reproduction, excretion, and respiration. It is said that the prosoma of or the cephalothorax contains all the appendages. There are two pairs of appendages that are for feeding. The first pair is the chelicerae and the second pair is the pedipalps. The pedipalps, aside from feeding, is also sensory in function. It is also used for movement and reproduction. We also have paired walking legs that are posterior to the pedipalps. Members of the subphylum chelicerata has two main body parts, the prosoma and the opestosoma. The prosoma is also known as the cephalothorax and the abdomen, or the opisosoma, is also known as the abdomen. The first two pairs of appendages are the chelicerae and the pedipalps, and they are both involved in feeding. The chelicerae tear apart food, and the pedipalps are modified for grabbing, killing, or reproducing. Immediately behind these are the characteristic four walking legs. The second tagma is known as the opestosoma, and as you can see in the figure, there is no distinct appendages. Only the spinnerets used to make silk are probably the remnants of the ancestral appendages on the opestosoma. Ticks and mites belong to the order Acarina. These are ectoparasites, and others are free living. They are considered to be most serious to human health, so they are of public health significance. The prosoma and the opisosoma are fused and covered by a single carapace. The chelicerae and the pedipalps are variously modified for piercing, biting, and have four pairs of walking legs. 
The metastigmata is the group or the suborder representing the ticks. And all the representatives of this group are parasitic in some part of the life cycle. The suborder metastigmata is composed of the family Ixodidae and the family Argacidae. The Ixodidae is also known as the hard ticks. The Argacidae is also known as the soft ticks. The group mesostigmata contains the chigger mites or the trombiculids and two foul mites, the dermanisus and the ornithonisus. This group also contains many free living species. The prostigmata contains the follicular mites, the modex, and the several hair clasping mites, keletiella. The astigmata contains many parasitic forms, including the burrowing mites, notoedres and sarcoptes, and the ear mite, autodectes. For the general characteristics of the ticks and the mites, so they are characterized as adults by having four pairs of legs and a fused anterior and posterior body that appears to lack segmentation. The body part of the ticks and the mites that comprises the mouth and the feeding parts is known as the natosoma. The natosoma comes from the Greek word natos meaning jaw and soma meaning body. It is also known as the capitulum. It is comprised of the hypostome, the chelicerae, and the pedipalps. This is a diagram of the body parts of a tick, representative tick, showing the natosoma part, or the part that contains the mouth and the feeding parts of the parasite. The body parts of the tick in the mites is composed of the capitulum, or the natosoma, and below that is the edisoma. So the segmentation of the opisosoma or the abdomen and the distinction between the prosoma and the opisosoma has been com almost completely lost for ticks and mites. This is a diagram of a mite showing the natosoma the, or the capitulum now showing the, the hypostome, the pedipalps, and the chelicera. We also have here the Edisoma of the mite now showing the, the legs, the genital and the anal openings, and the assortment of tactile and sensory structures. This is a diagram of a representative tick, Exodus resinos, with its legs omitted, showing the natosoma and the edisoma. The natosoma contains the hypostome, the pedipalps, and the chelicerae. We also have here a diagram, uh, an example of a male exodidae tick in the dorsal view showing the natosoma, the basis capitulae, the four legs, the first leg, the second, the third, and the fourth. Uh, for its legs, as you can see here, we have the presence of the femur, tibia, the pretarsus, the tarsus, the claws, and the pad. It is said that the ticks and mites breathe either through the trachea or directly through the cuticle or the skin. The position of the opening of the major lateral trunks of the tracheal system is used to distinguish the different groups. This opening of the tracheal system is known as the stigmata. In the ticks or the metastigmata, the opening of the tracheal system is through a stigmata that is found behind are the fourth pairs of the legs. In the mesostigmata, or the mites, the stigmatal opening is between the third and the fourth pair of legs. This is a general morphology of dermacenter steny, a tick showing the dorsal view and the ventral view. So as you can see here, we have here the presence of the stigmata and it is located at the level of the fourth leg of the tick. This is a diagram of the mite showing the important anatomical parts, the natosoma, showing the chelicera and the, and the pulp. We also have the legs and the 
uh, anus and the anal plate as well as the stigma the stigma or the stigmata so the stigmata is used to differentiate uh, the different groups for mesostigmata it is located between the third and the fourth pair of legs